What's up guys? It's here, it's me, chemical engineering guy. And we're going to continue our course of mass balance. Right now we're in the number one, which means we are in the introduction. And we are in section two, which is about how to account for mass balances. Now, we've seen scale up, we've seen type of processes, and we've seen a lot of system and theory about mass balancing. So, you have no idea what I am talking about, just go back to the sections and you will find out what I am talking about. Because it's very important to understand all those topics because I will be talking with you about that and if you have no idea then it has, makes no sense to be in this course. So please go backwards, learn it and continue. So mass balance for non-reactive systems. What does this mean is exactly what it says. It's a system that has no reactions. So, remembering we're studying steady state mass balances, which means no accumulation in the system. That's good. No reaction is involved, therefore there's no production nor consumption of matter, or well, not matter, species, and the mass balance generally goes as inlet equals outlet. Let me show you why. Now, as there is no reaction, there will be no production or consumption. Why? And because it is steady state, so there's no accumulation. Actually, it's zero, which is very, very nice because we will have not to deal with these differential equations, etc. And let me show you mathematically how the equation gets into inlet equals outlet. So we have from the mass balance equation here, we have this it's inlet minus outlet plus uh, production minus consumption equals accumulation. So production, we have no production, we have no chemical reaction, and consumption, we also have no chemical reaction. Accumulation is zero by default because it's steady state, so we are left with only inlet minus outlet equals zero, which I like better to pass to the other side so I can see that inlets are equal to outlets which is obvious because if you get something inside and it's a steady state, you have no accumulation, it must go out. Now, this topic here is very important. For n substances in a non-reactive system, you can only make n equations. And what does n substances mean? It means that either we have water and ethanol, we have n equal, equals 2, so what I want is to write mass balances. You know that you can always make a mass balance in the global section, which means in all the equipment. So if I had, I don't know, a distillation unit and had feed equals vapor and liquid, the mass balance will be something like F equals V plus L. Now, that's one equation, equation number one. But we could also do a mass balance equation based on water, which will be similar. X fraction of water in F plus, uh, times F. You also have the X fraction of water in volume and the vapor, sorry, and the X fraction, fraction in liquid. And not only that, we could also do it in the ethanol, which will be something like this. Okay, so we got another two equations to get a total of three equations. The problem here, guys, is that when you have two substances, you can only have two equations because one equation will be dependent. What does dependent mean? If you add this, you will get this. So either you get one and two, or two or three, or three and one, but never use 3, because if you use 3, you will get to the elegant yet interesting solution in which you prove 1 equals 1. So right now maybe you don't understand that much, but what do we have here is 3 equations and 2 nouns. So the problem is either overstated or something is wrong. So now, just remember, we can write always in an n substance balance, we can write always an n plus 1 equations. So I bring you this problem so you understand what do I mean. Imagine we have three balances. One, two, and three. Nice. 
and I want to solve for x and for q. So what I want is just 3 plus 1 equals q. That's number 4 equation. 3 equals x times q. Since I have q, I can substitute here and I will get x. 3 equals 4, four times x, which will be 3 fourths. And now I actually have all the values. I have x and q, the two nouns I told you about. But I still have one equation. The logical thing will be either I substitute to be sure or stop. But if I'm looking for an extra value, this will not help. Look, because if we substitute 1 minus 3 fourth times 4, this first parenthesis will give you 1 fourth, and this second one is 4. So 4 times 1 fourth gives you 1, which is exactly the one I have here. So that's what I mean. You prove 1 equals 1, which is interesting yet not so useful. So guys, always do n balances for your n substance system.